Our scripture lesson comes from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 13 through 16. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Lord, I pray that over the next few moments you would give me grace to preach with clarity and with boldness and with the unction that can only come from you. I pray that you would once again send the wind of your Holy Spirit, blow across the embers of my heart, and fan me into flames, yes, fan us all into flames, for Jesus. In his name we pray and give thanks. Amen. No doubt you've heard the story of this preacher who had a parishioner that always fell asleep. Didn't matter what he was preaching on, didn't matter what he, was, what he was doing, this guy always fell asleep. So the preacher said, I'm going to get even with him. So one day he said to the congregation, this guy's this guy fallen asleep, just, just sawing logs. The preacher said to the congregation, kind of quietly, he said, everybody that wants to go to heaven, he said, raise your hands. And everybody raised their hands, except this fellow, he was knocked out. So then the preacher, in a louder voice, he said, Anybody that wants to go to hell, he said, stand up. (laughs) This fellow hearing stand up jumped to his feet. (laughs) Looked around, and here's what he came to the conclusion of. He said, said, preacher, he said, I don't rightly know what we're voting on. He says, but it looks like you and me is the only one for it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's a lot of talk about heaven. And people want to know about heaven. As I was preparing for this message, I said, you know, I just have a small window for preaching today, and I took way too long the first service, so I'm going to try to even cut back a little bit this service. I know the choir saying amen. (laughs) They heard it. And and so, so what I want to do is just share with you Uh, five words or phrases that stick out from the scripture today. And sometime after the new year, I'm going to preach a series on heaven and hell. And then I can go into a lot more detail about what heaven is like and what hell will be like. But today I just want to concentrate on five words or phrases that stick out from our scripture. The first word that jumped off the page at me is the word faith. Faith. Believing and living for heaven takes faith. It's not foolishness. It's not folly. It's a genuine belief that God will do what God says. The Hebrew writer declares that faith is believing in what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. Faith. The second word that came from this passage of Scripture and and arrested my attention, is the word promise, promise. Heaven is a place of promise. Jesus gave his disciples a promise in John chapter 14. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus was saying to them, you can trust me to keep my promises. Do we believe that Jesus will keep that which has been promised to us? I, I hope so, I hope so. The third word or phrase that jumped out to me was foreigners and strangers on earth. Foreigners and strangers on earth. Now we're not going to be here, that is in this realm of existence, we're not going to be here forever. We're only passing through on our way to eternity. Now some folks live like this is all there is. Can I just tell you, I just want you to know that there is more beyond the grave. It is not true that he or she who has the most toys 
at the end wins. That's not true. This is only the beginning of something that goes beyond the grave. We're foreigners and we're strangers on earth. This life is important, and I don't want you to, I don't want to undervalue that, don't want to underestimate this. This life is important, but this is not all that there is. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Heaven is real. Well, hell is real too, and we're going to talk about that in a series later on. Foreigners and strangers on earth. The next phrase that jumped out at me, it says they were looking for a better country. A better country. Abraham, the father of the faith, left his home in Ur of the Chaldeans following after God. He didn't know where he was going. I always like to say it this way. It doesn't matter if you know where you're going as long as you know who you're going with. And he decided to go with God. And later on, he discovered that it wasn't just about houses and lands and descendants, the promises that God made to him, but God had something even beyond that, beyond the tangible earthly stuff. And so he started looking for a better country, a, an eternal destination, a heavenly home. Well, the last phrase that jumped out at me, it says that there's a prepared place. Heaven is a prepared place. Heaven is the dwelling place of God, and it's a place for the people of God. And one day, we're going to go to heaven. Amen? Amen. Now, I, I just want to say, I say this all the time, I'm, I'm looking forward to going, but don't rush me. <laughs> heaven is a prepared place. Well, does everybody that dies, does everybody that dies, does everybody go to heaven? I want to just answer that question. And I want to tell you, no. Everybody that dies does not go to heaven. A good friend of mine, a pastor, was asked one day about a certain person and whether he thought that they were going to be in heaven or, or, or in hell. I love this, I love this answer. My friend, the, the pastor, answered this way. He said, there'll be some people in heaven that I will be surprised to see. And there'll be some other folks that are not there that I will be surprised they're not there. That's a pretty wise answer. I think what he was really saying is, as a pastor, as a preacher, I can't, I can't grant you heaven, and I can't grant you hell. I can't preach you into heaven, and I can't preach you into hell. That's a decision between you and God. Amen? That's a decision between you and your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I can give you this guarantee. And I guarantee you this one is 100% guarantee. If you want to know for certain that you're going to be in heaven when you die, you have to have faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I can guarantee you that if you have faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that if you've opened your heart and you've asked Jesus to come in, if you've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, you are guaranteed a place in heaven. Now, can I put an asterisk by that? Because it's not fire insurance. It's not fire insurance that you purchase, you put on a shelf, and then you live any old way that you decide to live. It's a relational thing. It's a relational walk with him. And it's where we die to ourselves, we become alive to him, and we dedicate ourselves to growing in Christ's likeness. Martin Luther looked around at his, in his day, at the, at the type of lives that so-called Christians were living. And he said, listen, he, he said, we've got this wrong. You can't just accept Christ and then go and live your life as if he didn't exist. And that was the beginning of what we call the, the Reformation. There is such a thing as living a Christian life developing Christian character and Christian lifestyle, growing in Christ's likeness. When you trust Jesus as your Savior, there are some wonderful things that happen. Let me hit a couple of those, and then I'm going to be done. 
First of all, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you open your heart and you ask Christ to come in, you, you are forgiven of your sins, all of your sins. He doesn't forgive just some of your sins. He forgives all of your sins. And there is no sin that Christ cannot forgive. There is no sin that Christ has not atoned for. He forgives you of all of your sins. Now, sometimes you may have a hard time forgiving yourself, but he forgives you. I love the, the, the line in that great Wesley hymn. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sins, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear them no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. He forgives us of our sins. We become a part, when we accept Jesus Christ, we become a part of God's forever family, the church, the body of Christ. People from all over the globe, from every people group, from every language, from every tongue, from every tribe, we become a part of something that is, that is humongous, the body of Christ, the family of God. And we're being prepared. We're not, we're not finished products yet. Another benefit of receiving Christ as our Savior, our name is written in God's book of life. The Bible tells us that one day, the book of Hebrews says, it is appointed unto us once to die, and after that we're going to face the judgment. All of us are going, to fa are going to face the judgment of Christ. We're going to be judged for what we've done in our life. The Bible says that those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, those who have put their faith in Christ Jesus will receive an eternal reward. He'll say, come, blessed of my Father. Enter into the joys of eternity. And those who do not will be cast into outer darkness. Our names are written in the book of life. Is your name written in the book of life? I remember when I was passing down, pastoring down in Kentucky, we had this old guy. I mean, this guy was older than Zudas. He was old. They called him Dr. Stevenson. He was, he was a, a guy that, he was a Sunday school teacher, and they just called him, his nickname was Doc. And old Doc had a deep southern drawl, and he would, he would start singing this song. A horrible, horrible, horrible sounding. But I loved hearing it come out of his lips. He was, he was serious about it. He'd say, long ago down on my knees. Long ago I settled it all, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away, and the old account was settled long ago. And there was a gleam about that guy. There was a glow about that guy. He knew that his name was written in God's book of life, and he was excited about it. He was excited about it. Well, in Christ Jesus, when we accept him, we also have a place that is guaranteed in heaven. Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Heaven is a place of permanence. When we die, the righteous will go to be with the Lord immediately. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. You remember Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Heaven is a place of permanence and it's also a place of people yes we will know and be known in heaven i like that and you know what we're going to get glorified bodies i don't know about you but i'm looking forward to getting a glorified body <laughs> now the thing that thrills me about my glorified body i know it's just a little thing but it, it means a world to me jesus in his glorified body he walked through a wall i don't care anything about walking through a wall but what i liked is he picked up some bread and fish and ate it <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah Oh, yeah. Heaven is also a place of perfection. None but the righteous can enter in. Now, the good news is we don't have to work our way in. It's not our righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ that is imparted to us when we become Christians. It's our righteousness. He takes our sins, and he removes them, and he gives us his holiness. He gives us his righteousness, and we learn to grow into that even more, even more. Heaven is a place of perfection. Heaven is a place of peace. There's rest in heaven from the strife and the toils of life. 
There's peace between God and the people of God from every tribe, from every language, from every tongue, from every people group. Heaven is also a place of praise. It's a place of celebration and worship, a place of eternal joy and victory. I love this song, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus, Sing His Mercy and His Grace. He has gone to prepare a place for you and for me. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we're going to sing and we're going to shout the victory because we've been victorious in Christ. Can you just imagine those who have already passed on? They're they're victorious in Christ. They've rested from their labors. They've heard the wonderful words, the wonderful words that Christ has said to them, Come, come, blessed of my Father, enter into the joys of your reward. You've finished the course. You've kept the faith. And now there's laid up for you the crown of eternal life. And they've joined that great throng that that is talked about in the book of Hebrews. And they've heard these words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Well, let's pray. Gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for the promise that is ours that one day we shall be reunited with our loved ones who have trusted in you. Help us, Lord, to live lives that are pleasing in your sight, to share Christ with our family and with our friends, to pass on our legacy of faith. And Lord, one day we look forward to joining that crowd of witnesses. Until then, Lord, help us to run this race with patience and with perseverance. Lord, for those who are running uphill right now and facing struggles, I pray for an extra measure of your grace to be poured out in their lives. For those who have a, such a, a, a gnawing a sadness from the separation that's caused between them and their loved ones, Lord, give them joy in place of that sadness. Point them towards the cross of hope and help them bear the burden of loss that they feel today. Lead us all forward, Lord, and as we become a part of that church triumphant, we give you praise, we give you thanksgiving. We thank you for your broken body and for your shed blood and for the hope that is ours because of what you have done. In the name of Christ, amen. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace in one another. Therefore, let us together confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be in the church. We have not done your will. We have broken your laws. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves that God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Glory to to God. God. Amen. Will you now please stand as we share the peace of Christ with one another.
Well, it is now time for our offering. That is right. We, we give with a joyful heart. And as we give, I do want to remind you that we are for our fishes and loaves, if you have loose change that you would like to put into the offering plate, that goes to, uh, to help uh, those that are in need in our community. So let us now give with joy, joyful hearts. And may the ushers please come forward. And you may be seated. I invite the communion stewards if they will come forward at this time. (coughs) 
we practice what is commonly referred to as open communion. That is, it is not necessary for you to be a member of the United Methodist Church nor of this local congregation in order to receive communion. We want to invite you to participate, to receive. This is a table of grace. It is a table of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for your broken body and for your shed blood, and we pray that you would bless us as we commune this time. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege you give us to share in this holy meal. We pray that you would bless us as we share in the name of Christ. Amen. Hear these words. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Christ Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, and he gave thanks to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray that you would bless these elements, that you would consecrate them and consecrate us for your service. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs> 